Within our small series on evaluations of rural development projects, we want to get some reflection on the subject of evaluation of agriculture and rural development projects in a more general sense. For that, we want to look at enhancing natural resource management projects, which is a typical aim of ARD projects. Suzanne, you have conducted many evaluations of ARD projects. What would you say, how effective are natural resource management projects and approaches usually? And what is the most important success factor? For me, the most important criteria to um, say, uh, to assess whether this was successful or not is whether the poor small-scale farmers can participate. And in most of the times, they cannot. That means if we don't have a particular approach how to integrate the poorest, then they automatically um, they are automatically normally excluded. The better of farmers, they can participate, they can integrate themselves, and then the projects are successful for them. But for the poorer part, for the for the uh, really for the small scale farmers who live uh, live in, 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 in more pro, uh, in more rural areas um, without being very well connected, most of the projects fail. And uh, well, and this means the most important factor is how is the institutional setting? How do, do we um, embed these approaches? For example, value chains or uh, natural resource management uh, agreements, how do we integrate them in institutional settings so that the poor small-scale farmers can participate? And um, actually, um, many donors, they don't really consider and, um, uh, that um, they cannot, they don't have choices. And um, I think in a lot of projects until today, though it is known actually that small-scale farmers are really um, suffering from hunger three or four months a year. Um, no particular institutions most of the time are, um, um, are, are developed to integrate them actively in the schemes, in the regime, in the innovation. You said, in a nutshell, the institutional setup is the most important success factor. Yes. If we consider that, a good evaluation for me is one that moves quickly beyond collecting data and interpreting that where it's wrong, goes and says, this is the recommendation. That's why I would say in the future, you better do this and that. Now, considering yeah. this important success factor, where do you think is the one critical element where the um, institutional setup should be approached in a different way? I think one is, um, that the innovations um, have to be um, simple enough, they have to be um, affordable, and um, the risks have to be taken by, um, as I said, the organization or maybe also the government or maybe um, a donor. And then uh, the small-scale farmers um, who cannot um, take the entry barrier um, they have to organize themselves. And this is what they don't do, because um, when I speak about African countries, um, most of the farmers, they are so, ma so, so frustrated. Um, they are mistrusting. They have bad and negative experiences from cooperatives and so on. So um, actually, um, we have to build on their uh, traditional institutions, and then we have to have time and to assist them um, how they can maybe organize themselves. So if you think in a more general sense, looking from the evaluation point of view, what would you say, what has to be done in the project design to make it more easy to support that self-organizing part of those small-scale farmers? What, what, can the, what can the project do? When it comes to evaluation, um, uh, it is core to speak with the target group. This is one, it's often not the case. Um, until today, though it is written everywhere, um, the, actually the beneficiaries, um, many, many times they are not um, 
uh, integrated in the interviews or not systematically. Sometimes we speak with one farmer, but mostly this is the farmer who can uh, speak easily and who is the better of farm. But to integrate also in the evaluation um, uh, the interests and the perspective of the uh, beneficiaries or the so-called beneficiaries and then also to communicate um, the result of the evaluation in a, such a way that um, a re responsible persons know what they can do because this is also I think a weakness of many evaluations that um, uh, they put the finger maybe in the wounds sometimes, um, but um, many times they are not suggesting what, what can be done in a concrete way. They do it very often in a general way without addressing actually uh, the specific um, stakeholder who can also do something about it. And uh, so they, um, uh, the recommendations, I observed that the recommendations in evaluation, sometimes they are too general, too abstract, um, not concrete enough, and sometimes they are also um, written in a way, maybe arrogant way, so that the staff members in the program, they feel annoyed or frustrated or whatever, so that they don't take the recommendations. Do you think that maybe part of the problem is that the participatory part of your project only starts very late. If you consider going back to the project design, would it maybe help if that farmer input would come much earlier into the when, when the whole thing is actually set up? Not only when the whole thing is designed and set in front and now you now you're asked what you think of it. And, they, and that's where you get maybe a lot of shaking hands because it, for their perspective, it's all done already. Is that maybe, would that help? Uh, yes, I'm convinced that um, to integrate farmers into the planning um, phase also early enough, but also implementation phase and for sure also evaluation. This is core, but not um, uh, the whole um, uh, package. Um, uh, because um, and there are also other things which are very important, and not on, only the, the fact that it should be participatory um, or participatory. Sometimes this cannot help because the farmers, um, actually, often they don't know what to do, how to succeed. They, uh, they, um, because they are stuck in their situation, sometimes they cannot imagine how can they escape from poverty. They cannot imagine what can they do differently. Because if it was so easy, they would do it. So um, to come up with new, new ideas, with innovation, please don't expect that the farmers do it. I have spoken to so many farmers, maybe two or three thousand personally. And um, I must say, um, uh, the suggestion, maybe I speak a little bit different uh, uh, than many others do. They say the farmers have the big idea. We have all these communicative uh, media and uh, tools and so, so on. So we know about best practices. We know about possibilities how to integrate poor farmers and which innovations are affordable, are also income generating not only push resilience, but also income. This is also a core, core um, uh, condition for poor small-scale farmers to adapt things. We cannot only speak about resilience. We have to achieve that um, it is in the short term also um, profitable for the poor farmer. Knowing this um, and considering the, situa the, the real situation, then we can uh, try to um, to uh, suggest innovations and by considering also the innovation system of the country. There, there is always an innovation system which is already there. I would like to go um, to another issue about evaluations. Um, I think they are a very well established integral part of the overall development work mode of operation. However, it seems to me at least that once the evaluation is done, the, the, there, that's an end point. Um, there's not much scaling up, it seems, and um, 
there there's a lot of talk about how you actually have the cycle of monitoring and evaluation but once the project is finished the results um, are not fit in a methodology way into new projects that's my observation how do you feel about that yes that's true um uh, but it depends on the way you do the evaluation. We can learn only from the why. We cannot actually learn so very well from the what. And um, this is why, um, also it is very late. If you do an ex post evaluation, then you know, okay, this time it was not a success. But the next project or the next program will be slightly different, of course, or very different. Then you have the same thing again and you can't, and since you don't know why it was not a success, then you cannot learn from it. So this is why I say it is very, very important to mix, to, do, uh, to um, develop a mixture or the design, the evaluation in a way that quantitative and also qualitative um, tools are used, um, which gives you information about the why. We've seen, with, especially with a lot of the uh, talk about working together with the private sector, we've seen uh, quite a lot of mentioning, talking about uh, exit strategies. So in other words, how can projects or many projects um, be viable after the actual project phase and live on their own? How can you exit being dependent on, on money that comes in for free? Um, what do you how do you feel about that do you see that this is actually done in the large scale when, when you do the evaluations or is this something that just ticked off um, in the log frame and not really continued i think um to make a project or program sustainable um also after uh, the donor um, withdrew um, uh, his money um it may be possible when the innovation was really um uh, useful and affordable and income generating for the farmer, for the poor farmer, and not only for several, some better off farmers. Then, of course, um, it will be overtaken by the farmer. And if you have really um, found these links to the innovation system in the country, that means if you have only, if you have built your own parallel um, innovative system as a donor, then there's no sustainability you can expect. But you have to do it in the system of the partner country. Then, of course, if it was a good idea, it can be a success. It will be a success, but not always. And we have to normalize negative side effects because all the things we do have also some negative side effects. And it is very important to do this evaluation very early so that you can see, aha, there's a negative side effect. So how can I avoid this negative side effect? Or maybe how can I compensate it? There is always a loser of an innovation. If we have, to, for example, tractors and we, we think this innovation is um, very successful, there are some people who own oxen they are maybe the losers of this uh, innovation. Then we, tr we cannot avoid this, but we can try to compensate for this loss. Maybe it's not so much about winners and losers, but maybe this notion of creative destruction is, is useful because you need to tear something down usually in order to put up something new in place. Maybe I would like to um, in, uh, uh, tell you or to name a concrete um, innovation which I think um, is um, uh, empowering uh, poor smallholders and it's actually very simple. And I think this is also one um, core criteria, it should be simple. This is this e-voucher system which, um, uh, with which um, uh, these fertilizer subsidies, which are a core activity of many, many countries in Africa, that the on the national scale they give um, uh, poor small-scale farmer subsidies in kind for fertilizer. And this activity actually is very political and it fails all the time and always the fertilizers come too late. and at the end, um, no poor um, farmers profit from this. But if you do it via um, a mobile phone and cash transfer, it cannot be corrupted 
and the farmer himself or herself, she can buy from this money what she thinks she needs in order to produce, uh, to, to, to gain a good harvest. That means she or he, the farmer, can um, buy, for example, a specific fertilizer or a specific input needed in, this, in, in, in the particular situation. And this is much more targeted. It is anti-corruptive, and it is very simple, actually, to do so. So um, things like that, pilot programs like this, uh, that which I know in, in African countries, they can be excellent in the effect, but only, mostly, they uh, are not wanted by the government or also sometimes by the donor, but in this, in this, um, in this case by the government because it's a political issue. So what I want to say is um, the political will should be also there. It must be there. If there's no political will um, um, of, the, of the government, of the partner country, then it's also not possible. If we talk about evaluations, we always have this notion M&E, monitoring evaluation. It's sort of always said in one breath. But I have the impression that the monitoring part is falling off the tracks quite often. Um, yes. Maybe you can go into that a little bit because it's, it seems that the whole thing is pushed towards the end of the project. Sometimes the project uh, leader is even hired on beyond the project to write the reports, to prepare for evaluation. And so the, 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 there, there's this thing, things need to be filled into log frames, numbers are, are created to put into there. And so the monitoring part uh, maybe you can go into your experience there a little bit. I'm more a specialist on evaluation than on monitoring, but this has a reason, because I don't like um, to monitor data which is um, actually regularly um, collected. And then sometimes we have so many uh, cemeteries of data which we don't use. Um, so um, I like actually regular evaluation, not every month, not every week but maybe every second year or every third year. Um, and this is much better than to evaluate only ex post. So during, to evaluate um, during a program and then to do it in a um, semi-quantitative, semi-qualitative way. Um, I think this is the best thing you can do. With monitoring systems, I have the impression that um, Sometimes um, the data collection is good, yes, but I don't know what actually at the end they do with all these numbers. So, but they would be fed into your evaluation in a way, isn't it? Yes. If, it is, if um, there is really a um, serious way and, it, uh, and also a, um, a design how this data is used, then I'm convinced. But I have, I'm, I'm afraid that sometimes there is no concept how the data is actually used and what do I do if I see, ah, oh, this can fail or maybe the, the monitoring data tells me that the performance is not what I expected. So what does that mean and what do I do with all these numbers? Now, if the, if the data from the monitoring brings about information that the concept of the project would have to be changed a little bit, um, do you think that this is not happening often enough? Is it too static, the whole planning, the whole uh, um, ideas put into place to put up the log frames, the, the, the whole governance issues around the project, and then the monitoring comes and brings in ideas that this should actually have a major shift into another direction. Is this not, is that, does the system not cater for this sort of insights during the project? Actually, in Germany, you can. Um, uh, in GIZ, for example, they can, um, how they achieve the, the indicators um, uh, they, in their um, application, it's their business. Um, so the uh, government and the German or the Ministry of um, uh, Cooperation and Development, they don't need to know or they, 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 they say, okay, you are free to change the way how to achieve your goals, you are free to do that, 
They are even not, um, well, and that was different before, but in 2003, they changed the system and they, um, uh, they said, okay, if you are free to change the way how to reach your goals, but you have to say uh, what goals and objectives really in detail you want to achieve. We're here with the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development. And the idea would be for you to maybe come up with one message, what you want to uh, say to all the donors out there in, in the agricultural field on the basis of your evaluation. What's your message to them? What, what do you think would be core for them to consider changing? Don't stop trying to uh, reach uh, the poor um, uh, small-scale farmers only because it's difficult. Um, no, please try again and in a different way to reach them and integrate them in the evaluation, in a systematic way. Not just one farmer there, one farmer here. In a systematic, systemic way also, and I'm sure this works and um, I know that it can work. Thank you very much. Okay, bye.